Hello, welcome to another episode of Start Podcast. Today we have Glory Omarege, Omarege, CEO of Homecraft Interiors and Projects. So we're going to jump right in. Um, first of all, tell us more about you and your business. And the one question for this podcast is, how did you start? Okay. My name is Gloria Morigi, as rightly said. I run um, an interior and project finishing firm where we we finish um, pro, um we finish um we take turnkey projects to finish we work from carcass to finishing as to um decor and then handover. So we do turnkey projects and then we also have a furniture factory where we produce uh we produce our own furniture, some of our own furniture, because furniture range is quite large. So we produce some of our own furniture. And then we have um, two showrooms in Lagos, one in Lekki, one in Yai. And we've been in business for 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, recently, we just launched um, a home fragrance line called Moment in Time by Homecraft. And also a ready-made wow. curtain line called Asiko Lux Curtain. And then also a door line, internal door lines called A Great Door. We just launched that in January this year, 2023. And um, so that's all we do. We do interiors, um, interiors and project finishing, like I said. So, yeah. Okay. So how did you start? How did you start this? sounds like a lot of business <laughs> <laughs> okay well it's just a, a, a diff, we just um, did like different product line but it's still the same for um business. yeah 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 so home fragrance doors um mm -hmm. curtains are still part of um decor but we just exactly a product line that can stand on their own okay well i started while i was in uni i actually started from what we now call uh, from maybe like drop shipping mm -hmm. <laughs> that was it wasn't called drop shipping then but that was the model i followed there was someone who was making beddings and um, cutting no she wasn't making cutting she was making beddings and drop pillows then and then i was in school i just didn't like being idle so my free time i i want to look for something to do and then maybe from me when i was young i've always loved money so i like having money <laughs> Well, I, I just can't imagine not having money. So I really, really love having money at all times. So then I was in school. I wasn't doing so much. When I come back from school, I wasn't doing so much. And I started thinking, okay, what can I do? How can I subsidize the money I get from home? And then I was a member of the choir then in Ibadan. I was staying in Ibadan then. And then um, one of our oldest members just told me, oh, my wife is making some stuff. She's making ready-made um male uh, male wears and also um bed sheets throw pillows that um she's looking for people to help her to market. I said, oh I will do and then I spoke with her, I met her and then I will take her product. I'll take some and then you know just take them alongside with me when going to school. So at all times while I was in uni I was always carrying my handbag, my product in one huge um paper bag and then you know, with my books, I was always like that. So everybody I meet, I'll talk to them about my bed sheets. Uh, I sell bed sheets. I sell this. I sell that. I remember going to the owner of my school then and told them, I sell bed sheets. Uh, I sell. Then after some time, I started making duvets. I asked the lady, she wasn't making duvets then. And then luckily I found a market around my school where they make duvets. So I go there, I tell them then. I didn't even understand the sizes or what I do. But even before then, one of those, those days, I was standing by the road and then one um one a member of my church who happens to be a hotelier um stopped for me and asked me where I was going. I just hopped into the car and then for me then I don't even wait. I started talking about my business. Ah, this is what I do. I sell bedding, sir. And I was like, Oh, do you know I'm a hotelier? I said, Oh, yes, yes, yes. Please come and patronize me. And he said, ah, he doesn't buy bed sheets. Okay, what I can do is that I would um, ask at the hotel if we need bed sheets. And then maybe you can supply us. Do you know about hotel bedding? I said, yes, I didn't know about hotel bedding. And by the time I dropped, he gave me an appointment for the next day. I ran to read about hotel bedding. You know, 
by the time I read about it, I was like, okay, so where do I now get the material? Somebody told me about Ted Yosho and all of that. So I went to him the next day and I told him, I didn't even know how many yards makes a particular size of bed sheet at her then. So, but I just spoke with, so when I went to him the next day, I told him and I was just open enough. I said, excuse me, sir. Um, I just started this business, but I want to grow in it. And he said, okay, I will teach you some few things. Wow. And he said, do you know how to write a quotation? I said yes, from what because I was studying economics. So in one of the courses, they've taught us how to write quotation. By the time I did my own school format, he said, no, this is not, this is how they accept theirs. He taught me right in his office how to write a quotation. And he now asked, do, does your wow. business have a name? I said, no. He said, you have to coin a name. That's not, you are supposed to actually be a registered business before we give you a business. But because I know you, I'm going to step in for you wow. and break all those protocols for you. Wow. And I said, okay. So he gave me the format. I followed the visit. He asked me, how much are you going to sell? Before then, I had gotten in touch with um, someone in Ted Show. They told me how much they sell and all of that. So they told me how many meters they wanted. They didn't want me to make it because they had in house three lots. So by the time I went and came back and then, Next, they gave me the job and said, um, they're not going to pay for it. I have to look for money to do it. I said, ah, I don't have money, sir. <laughs> that is, because it's a lot. They asked me to supply three, 300 pieces of bed sheets. And that was, I was just like, um, how many months? Maybe like three months into the business. So, and I said, ah, can you borrow me money, sir? <laughs> and, um, okay, he said, uh, that, you know, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be a proper business lady and all of that. And I said, ah, I don't have money. <laughs> so he said, okay, he was going to give me some money. So he gave me some. And by the time I get, got home, I needed about 100000 more. I told my dad, and my dad was like, ah, I should just give you 100 That This was in 2001. I should just give you 100000 Lyra like that. What do you want to do? I explained to him. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to give you the 100000 That moment, my father gave me that 100000 he it changed the narratives in me. It changed everything. Because at that point, I felt my dad took me serious and believed in whatever I was doing, even though I wasn't sure then. So that was how I did that business, even though I lost, I know I didn't really lose, but I didn't make so much because I didn't understand that. By the time I got to tell you show, those boys, you know, <laughs> I was, they ordered for the material in meter. By the time I got to the market, they said, ah, if I buy a meter, in one meter, I will get, so, you know, all those plenty details, but I didn't make so much money, but I was happy that I started something and then a, a hotel that big, would believe mm -hmm. in me. And also that was, then I just continued. And by the following year, they called me again to come and supply wow. 800. Oh my gosh. By this time, one thing I, one thing I know that it was a gift for me is I understand, as an, I, I, even up to now, I understand materials very well. So I know, I don't know how I got that. That must be an innate ability. So they said the material I brought for the beddings was, they have never even seen anything like that. It was topmost wow. quality wow. and all of that. So they wanted me to supply another one. So they took it to 800, like that. That was how I started. So by the time I got into 300 level, I had started speaking to people. People had started giving me curtains, tropilos, duvet. And I was in school, I was in 300 level. So one day I, I had a tailor that I used to go to that would make things for me. You know, after some time, I thought the guy was just feeling like I was giving him, maybe I was giving him too much. My push was too much for him to handle. I was like, so I'll, I'll give him job and he won't do it. So one day we went there, then I was, um, I had a car, I was driving. So we drove down there and I was like, what happened? Why have you not done my job? My customer is waiting and all of it. I was like, ah, you can come and carry it and do it yourself. I said, hey. I said, you know what? So, and I went with a friend of mine and then my friend said, what is the meaning of this? Today, today, you go and get a shop. You get a tailor and then you start. There's no big deal in it. I run a tailoring shop. There's no big deal. Just get a tailor and explain. Go and read up. And one thing about me, I love to read. So wow. anything I would go, but then I had to go to the cafe. So all my profits, I saved my money to go to the cafe. So they know me at the cafe that I used to go to. I would always go there to go and read up. So everything I knew, I was just reading up. And then by the time I went there and read up about it, how to, so I understood the measurements. I understood everything I needed to do. So, and then by the time we packed our stuff from the guy's house, and then we went back to my friend's shop. And I said, eh, let's go and get the shop. I said, we shop. I was only joking. No, I don't plan. I'm in school. I cannot own a shop. How where do I even get the money? So I know shops are not that expensive. Let's go. Ah, 
I was shaking like, hey, this thing. I was very planning to go and look for another tailor. You know, I said, I didn't take this thing this serious. <laughs> he said, call. Then I was dating somebody. He said, call your boyfriend or call your dad. I said, my dad will not hear this one. You know, my dad sent me to an expensive school. I'm paying so much. I cannot tell him that. I want to live there. He said, you're not leaving school. I said, I called my boyfriend. I told him. You know, I said, eh, how much is the shop? The shop then was, I think, 20000 25000 Wow. And for said, a okay. year. I said, just like that. Before we need, my friend had taken me to one place, uh, agent. The agent said there was a shop. <laughs> By evening, I got in a shop. By then, I was shaking. Like, I didn't plan to do this thing. I'm in school. Mm-hmm. I'll be graduating next year. This thing will take a lot of my time. What do I do? And all of that. So, but I just took it and I got to my, told my dad. My dad was like, oh, really? You got to a shop? How are you going to manage? I convinced him and he said, okay, so what do you need? And the only thing I could afford then was a rug, um, rug on the floor. It was an open shop. And my, okay, um, the Christmas before then, my boyfriend had asked me what I wanted for Christmas. And I said, a sewing machine. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I wow. didn't know how to use the sewing machine. I just said a sewing machine from nowhere. And he bought me a sewing machine. So that was all I opened. So that's, um stuffs I went to carry from that guy's shop the um um the job I had at hand then and then the I bought rug nine thousand naira and then wow. uh, my sewing remember machine the number. and she also <laughs> took me to another person who said that somebody was looking for a tailoring job as in a tailor who was who needed a job and the lady agreed to start the next day this whole thing start, happened oh like gosh. magic and that was how wow. I started this is when they say so I got into desire. I got a shop Mm-hmm. And then we started, the tailor will sit down there. Okay, I didn't even have a stool for the tailor. So I had to go and quickly make a stool. <laughs> and on my birthday, you know, before my birthday, I just had, there's a friend of mine who happens to be my birthday mate, was getting married on that very day. And I, wow. so I just heard like two days before then that, ah, your friend is getting married. And I said, ah, what am I going to do that is special on my birthday? He was getting married on our birthday mm-hmm. and it was my birthday mate. And I said, okay, let me open my shop. So I opened my shop on my birthday. My dad came, pray and everything. So after praying and, you know, we just opened and we were looking at each other. We started. (laughs) So I had to go to, so a lot of time I'll go to school, come back to attend to the shop. That was how I started. Wow. So, you know, after then, started growing. (laughs) In my first year, in my first three months of starting the shop, I I have a friend who was, um, He's still an accountant. He was practicing then and he said, Oh, let me do your account and all of that. In three months, I had made a profit of 300,000. I said, Yeah, wow. there's wow. money in this still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it kind of really gingered me. And then I started. And then before you know it, it was one year. You know, but then I had always had it in my mind that I wasn't going to do it for long because I had always wanted to work in a bank. So my dream was working in a bank, wearing mini skirts, looking nice. And, you know, that was just all I wanted. I didn't even know. I didn't even want to care what they do. Let me just be wearing my mini skirts <laughs> with my nice high heels. Yeah. With my makeup in place. And But after one year, my business was one year in September 2004. I had my birthday. It was my, tw- no, 2005. It was my birthday. And also I was 25. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't say my age. <laughs> you know, so it was my birthday and then my dad was around. You know, we had a celebration. I was happy and all of that. And by December that year, my dad passed. Oh, and that changed scary. the whole narrative because I honestly did not plan to do this business. I just wanted to do it until I finished school mm-hmm. and then go into my banking, mm-hmm. you know. And when wow. my dad passed... People came, promised us a lot of things. We're going to do this. Don't worry. My dad was working in a firm then, and the company came. If you guys want to work in this company, we'll get you a job. You can start. Don't worry. We'll take care of everything. People came and promised us everything else. And um, after some time, I realized that um, people are bound to make promises. Keeping it is not really (laughs) sometimes up to them. And then people fail, and people disappoint not because they don't want to, but sometimes the circumstances with which they made their promises, they are not be, they are not able to keep it up later in life. You know, things happen to everybody. And I 
I called my sisters and I told them, I said, okay, this is the reality, but we have to move on. What do we do? I said, okay, since I'm doing this business, at least we've been getting some money from this business while my dad was alive. And then I had small savings. I said, okay, now the reality is that very soon we might run out of supplies. We would have to, you know, feed, take care of ourselves. Luckily, we, my dad built a, built a house, so we, we didn't have a problem with rent, even though we eventually had a problem with rent. But, you know, and I said, my sister, I told my sister, my immediate sister, join me in this business. You'll be staying in the shop while I go and market. And then another of my sister, you go and learn to learn. And I give you three months to know it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had another sister who was, <laughs> who was, um, um, going to write, I think she was going to write Hawaii that year, and I told her, you only have one chance, you <laughs> must pass. <laughs> and then, you know, my mom, my mom was, you know, the effect of the loss really, you know, was so bad on her, so she was very, very ill for like a year. And that was how we started. So, that was when I knew that I started business. The others were just, you know, mm -hmm. my dad would present customers to me, my boyfriend was stand, you know, it was just like around, but then I started real business. I had to go out to market my business, to talk about my business to, you know, and that was when the real business started. And then I had to move from where I was, move to a bigger shop. And then since then, I, another thing I would like to talk about is the growth of the business. I started as some, I was selling bed sheets and throw pillows. After some time I entered, started making dubey. And after that, I started making curtains. Okay, so how I now finally got into, into, um, into project finishing, furniture making, and all of that. So as the business progresses, you know, people will keep asking you, ah, do you do this? Do you do that? Mm -hmm. And, I will, you know, so then when I, will, when I, when, when I started that, I, didn't use, I wasn't doing production of any of these things. I'll just look around and look for somebody who does it very well, who will deliver, and then give me a good price. So by the time I go around, like somebody, oh, I want to make a, a sofa, for instance. Sofa didn't start until like later, later on. But maybe like painting, yes, it was painting that started. And then because I have artistic background and also I just have innate ability for creative, creativity and all of that. So I started mixing paint. So I'll go and buy paint. At that time, I could not afford the big brands. I didn't even know about the big brands. There's not even good there. I didn't even know because I, I was living in a bad so there's a limit to the things yeah. that we had. So I would, I would um, go to the paint um, supplier. I would buy paint. Then maybe I need to get some colors. I'll mix out my colors myself. I would, you know, I started doing all of that. And people started loving the things. And then I was doing very creative painting. I'll do bubbles on the wall. I'll do artistic things on the wall. I was just doing my own thing. And then people started liking that and coming for, oh, I want to paint my room. I want to paint my children's room. I want to paint my office, you know, like that. And then after doing painting, you know, people would ask you, ah, okay, I want to make a um, curtain. Do you do blinds? You, you know, it just started graduating. So it was from, it wasn't as if I just woke up one day and I'm all of this. It was from one point to the other, from one point to the other. And then how I finally got into project finishing, I remember there was um, there's this uh, lady I met who is now more or less like my sister. I call her my sister and everybody knows her as my sister. You know, I just met her then and I walked up to her. Before then, while still in school, I had run, I, I, I used to run a food cafe, a cafe in uh, my church. <laughs> so... I had a snack bar then, and which I used to run. After some time, I was making food at the snack bar, but I wasn't allowed to cook there. She was, she was uh, making food at um, a restaurant not too close, not too close, to, uh, not too far away from me. Okay, so I went to meet her and asked her to be supplying us food. We'll come and take some food from her and sell at her own snack bar. So and she agreed. You know, she just loved me. So this young girl, like, yeah, what, what is she doing? Very enterprising. <laughs> And she came to my place to look at the place and, and I was doing well, you know, it was a big church and they had a crutch during the week and, and then an office was running there. So people come into the office. So I was making, I, I was selling other things and I was making money. So she said, ah, okay. so she liked me since then. So when I started interior, 
it was my inner circle, those people that I had known that I first of all went to. And I went to meet her. Auntie, I now do this. So I do interior. Do you want to make your curtains, beddings, whatever? I, I can paint also. I said, eh, really? Ah, okay. You know, she just liked me and took interest in me. So sometimes when she has something, she'll call me. I come and do this thing. Come and do this. Do, 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 do tropillos. Do this one. Like that. And then also, because she had been in the business, when I have some questions about, I'll go to her and ask her, please, how can I do this? Or how do I go about this? And she will tell me. And one time she had to move from her, okay, she, she wanted to expand and move to another re um, restaurant. By then I had gotten a lot better, but I had never done anything projects. So the only thing I've done, maybe around my house, try to renovate what, I just look at it and think I can do this thing. And then I'm very inquisitive and I will also read. I'll go on Google was my paddy paddy. Mm -hmm. I would go on Google to read up about how to transform a space, how to make a small space appear larger, how to wow. combine two rooms, all of those things. So, and then she just told me that she had a place and then I should come and look at the place. And by the time I went, I said, oh, I can do something to this place. Even though right inside, it was bigger than what I had ever done. I was shaking. I was like, oh, what's that? I'll wow. go and read up, I'll look for. And then another thing I also do is this. When, I'm, when I have a job, and then I don't know about it. But the fact that I took it doesn't mean I will try to do it myself. I'll look for, I don't mind not even making money from the first one. I'll look for somebody who is very good, who has like the best I can lay my hands on that will do it. And I've, I've done, like when I started making kitchens, I've done kitchens, a lot of kitchens I didn't make a dime from. I just wanted my name on it that I did that kitchen. And then I'll go and meet, uh, you know, like the pros, and they will come. They will, by the time they do the charges, even we will be scared to add one couple. I just gonna give customer. Wow. <laughs> like but it was a learning curve. I learned mm -hmm. a lot from all those processes. You know, so like the same thing. So when I I started talking to bricklayers, talked to tilers, looked at and then I used to walk. I would just be walking left, right, and center, like aimlessly looking for uh, people who are doing stops and all of that. And that was how I learned really. And I got better. I finished all of that, and and also her husband was very helpful. He used to work in a multinational, so he understood a lot of things about projects, and that he taught me. And he would supervise, and then you know wow. it was just a very beautiful time for me. And that was my first major project. And immediately after that, a hotel called me. Hmm. Somebody I knew, you know, from still from my circle. That's I tell you, your circle is very important. Starting a business, you have a lot. Of, I tell people everything you need is within your circle. You know, wow. people that you have relationship with over over the years, and then also don't all don't be silent. A lot of people you are doing business. People around you don't even know what you do. I can bet the rats in my house know what I do. Every because I'm always thinking <laughs> it. <laughs> you know. I'm someone I met somebody and I was talking at a point and I stopped. I said, Who is home craft? I said, Oh, so I said, You mentioned home craft like how many times in how many minutes of conversation? Because I would, I would, you you are the one that can sing the praise of your business. If you don't like a commercial that says, if you don't, if you don't, who will? Mm -hmm. You are the one that can sing the so you have to keep you won't be tired. You have to, you cannot be ashamed, you cannot be no. uh, ashamed of what you are doing, of your hustle. So he was a small guy, one small guy, one of my small friends that told somebody in the hotel, hotel of 100 and, 170 room hotel. Just mentioned that, ah, I have somebody that does interior. I think she, he was working there as um, a housekeeper, one of the housekeepers. And I had somebody that can do the interior da, 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 and said, oh, really? Okay, no problem. Let the person come. And that was how I went there. And before you knew it, I became, I became um, like their in-house interior designer. I was wow. doing everything. So it was a learning ground for me. I had the opportunity of trying my hands on different things. I had, then, you know, and then I also had, my pastor was, uh, um, my pastor is an architect, he's still an architect. And then he used to run a furniture factory. So he had carpenters I used to use. So I spoke with him and he said, okay, you can use those carpenters. So they were one of the best carpenters there. And then they were doing my, they were doing those. I tried my hands on different things. 
And I don't, I had done a lot of things in the interior. And I said, okay, this is what I want to do. I've gone into construction. I said, okay, I don't want to do construction. The Wahala is too much. But you know, I leveraged on a lot of relationships around me mm -hmm. to get to where I am. So for me, I tell people, it's difficult for me to say I'm self-made. I'm not. Because mm -hmm. I'm a product of so many people, product of so many um, uh, 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 people I've leveraged on. I've leveraged on people's um, knowledge, people's relationship and all of that. So I cannot say, oh, I'm self-made. No. Mm -mm. So, yeah. So, and that's very important when you start your business. Your first customers are the people around you. They are the people who will trust you first. They are the mm -hmm. people who would... They might not... A lot of people around me then were not really giving me jobs. So, But they were talking about me to other people. They were recommending me to other people. And, you know, the way they would talk about me would make, would make other people to believe in them, in believe in me. You know, so that was how I, like, I was saying back to the story of the restaurant. I started, um, you know, um, project finishing. On that project, I merged two spaces together. I broke, I did tiling, I did, it was exhausting. I did not get a dime, but I was happy. So along the line, in your learning time, if, not, if you're all about money from the beginning and you're all about money, at the end of the day, you don't, I don't know, there's a way it is. You won't, you won't be able to learn so much and then you won't also learn the, there are sometimes, there are some things that you need to go through. Every businesses have their own time. They have their own learning curves. They have their own challenges. And sometimes if you don't go through those challenges and then you just came from nowhere, boom, and you went like that, a lot of time you don't, you, you have not built strength enough to stand when adversity comes, because it will surely come. It will not be all smooth. The first second, the, my first year, it was good. I made money, you know, cheap money. And at that time, it wasn't as if I needed the money. So I just had money sitting in my account. I'll just be smiling to myself, rich girl, you know, but when the time, when the trouble came, all the things I've learned, all the things I've gathered, they came through for me to help me and all of that. So I started then, I, I was doing Ibada, I was doing so well in Ibada. Everybody, most people know me in Ibada. They say home crowd. They say, mm, I've seen, I've heard, I know. Mm -hmm. That's how much we did in Ibada until I decided to move to Lagos. I grew up in Ibadan. I wasn't born in Ibadan, but I grew up in Ibadan. I stayed like over 30 years in Ibadan. I was just tired. Nothing. It wasn't anything, but I was just tired. And then also I wanted more. I'm somebody mm -hmm. who is always longing for more. I want to do more. I want to be better. I want to, you know, at that time, you know, let me just give you this. When I finished my job, I remember when I finished that restaurant and everybody came and, oh my God, who did this? This is beautiful. How did you, how did you... Up even then, I could not, because standing at the door, looking at the job, you know, and then hearing what people were saying, I was still saying, ah, I should have done this. If I had done this, I would have, you know. Wow. And from there, I told myself, this is the least I'm going to do. I have to up my game and be better. And that is always it for me. I always love to, you know, strive to be better. So once I do something, that it's another, it's a, it's a, it's um. For me, it's an opportunity, another level to take it a, not, a notch higher. I'm always seeking to, you know, get better. Especially when people are hailing me. I feel, oh, okay. So if you're hailing me on this now, what happens if after some time you get tired, you go and look for the next? So I want, I want to get there exactly. before you get there. Mm. You know, it's my driving force. And then also, I, I like giving my all. So I treat each job as if this is the last one. This is the last opportunity. This is the only opportunity I have to impress this person. I don't have any other one. I have to give it everything I have. So I will go above and beyond to make sure that this person is satisfied. You must say, wow. You must say, oh, thank you. A lot of times mm -hmm. I've done jobs that people will say, thank you, thank you. And so I'll forget that I've not collected balance. <laughs> You know, it just makes me happy and fulfilled. So when I moved to Lagos, I moved to Lagos not 
or really because um, greener pastures, like people will say it. I was just tired. I was bored. I wanted something fresh. I wanted something something new. I want I want a another playing ground. Mm-hmm. You know, because wow. I thought I was becoming like a local champion where I was. You know, everybody ah home craft home craft, and my shoulder pad was getting higher. I said, <laughs> <laughs> it's time to look for another. Uh, uh, um, playing ground and when I came to Lagos it was it was totally different and then but really I didn't realize how much I have learned how much I have you know how much I have um, developed and gotten better until I got into Lagos I didn't even know I had that much mm-hmm. I remember going for one IDAN um, roundtable meeting what's IDAN Aidan is Interior Design Association of Nigeria. Okay. I'm not a member, but I just went for, for that um, meeting, that roundtable meeting. And then, you, you know, people were talking about different things. Talking about... I was just looking at them and I said, hey, hey, this thing goes Interior Design. I said, hey, hey. I just sat at the back. And then, and you know, somebody just called me to make a contribution. And by the time I opened my mouth and I started talking, people were turning to look at me like, where did you say you're from? <laughs> and, you know, even me, the things I said, I was shocked because I realized that I'm very hands-on on my business. Mm-hmm. I understand a lot of things. So when I'm explaining even to carpenters or to, I, is, I, I'm, I will tell you, I know the process from the very beginning. I know what I'm supposed to, I know how this finishing. So I have it in my head and I can interpret it to you in a way that you understand. So that's why I tell people, I said, I can use any worker. A lot of, I, 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 then when I started, people used to poach my workers and they would poach my workers and then they would now come back. Hey, this guy, but oh, you didn't tell me you were poaching this guy. How come? I said, ha, ah, I just saw him. Or he was the one that, you know, people would tell stories and I'm like, eh, so what now happened? Ah, this guy, how do you use him? Hey, this guy is not good at all. I said, mm, okay, sorry. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> but, you know, because I understand the work, I'm able to, you know, explain to them in a way that they understand. A lot of them are not schooled. There's a way you, you talk to them. There's a way, in fact, sometimes I say there, there are times that you talk to them. And I've been able to also develop a lot of artisans. You know, I have a painter that's been painting for me for maybe like 15 years. Oh. In fact, I have not only him, I have tailors, carpenters, people that have been working with me for that long. Why? Because a lot of them, they were just people I just took. And then I'll say, you know what, you can do this thing. There's no big deal. And then if you need tools, what are the tools that you need to be able to achieve it? I would have read up, I understand, say, okay, you will need this. Do you know how to use it? Let's watch YouTube together. We'll watch it, we'll learn, we'll do this. So they've gotten better. Their skills have been honed a lot better. So when they meet me, they don't want to let go because they know that they get things from me. My electrician has been working with me for over 15 years. I have a lot of workers like that, plumbers, you know, that have been with me. So and they have gotten people. better. Some of them were very young when I met them. And by now, they're doing amazingly well. They're, they understand the jobs well because they've been schooled. They, as in, you know, they've been properly trained. Do you understand? So even when, but until recently, maybe when now, when you take my word, they know what to do because they, they will follow my process. And once I get to the place, I, I can tell, hmm, this guy has been here. I say, ah, how do you know? I say, ah, I know how it will fit. This is my finish. I remember one time, when somebody pushed my carpenters and they did a job. When I got there, I said, ah, my carpenters did the job. The man was swearing. No. Hmm. And I called my worker. I said, I just told them, I said, you know what? You guys have been working with me for so, 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 and so. I trusted. By the time I finished with him, I said, I'm sorry, I did the job. Even though the customers were denying it. I will know. I can tell. Because they are the things I train them on. They are not usual thing and all of that. So, like I said, so when I got into Lagos, it was a different thing. But I knew that one of the things that sustained me is are those things that I've learned. Those things mm-hmm. I've taken time to understand. A lot of designers in Lagos don't 
I'm sorry to say, don't really understand the job. They just have the network of people that can give them the job. They know how to buy fine things. They don't know how to, you know. So they just depend solely on people. I can be on my site. I can do styling myself from head to toe. I can, you know, do a lot of things of my own. So it was the difference when I came. Mm. So people understand, okay, this one understands this job. It's not just telling me this thing is fine. So when I tell you a color, I know I will tell you about the functionality. I will tell you how it helps your environment. I'll tell you how it helps you yourself. Okay, what's the space for? Is it for a child? Is this for an adult? A lot of things that people don't think of that I will do. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm insisting that you must have all your edges round because you have children. And they're like, eh, hey, is that, does that really matter? I said, yeah, you know, safety mm-hmm. measures and all of that. So it kind of really wow. helped me. And then another thing was speed. Working in Lagos, working in Ibado, and also with the mentors I had, I had a mentor who was big on speed. She would tell me, when you deli- when you when somebody asks you to do a job, before the feeling of that job leaves the person, you must finish. I say, ha. He said, you know that when somebody is looking to decorate the house, there's an excitement mm-hmm. that comes with it. That excitement must that excitement must not win before you deliver. Because by the time the excitement has gone down, it becomes difficult. There will not be, the things that they ordinarily not see, the things they will not complain about, they not become, you not be dragging them and pulling and saying, hey, hey, how does that, how is that a thing in doing that? Are you not the one that had that for the job? Hey, keep your mood now. But I learned a lot from that. And delivering on time was one of the major edge I used in getting into Lagos. When I came, I told them, I told my, as in my work, I said, in this Lagos, when we tell them we are delivering in two weeks, this job must be ready in one week. Everybody, even though it was tough, it was tough because Lagos, there's so many contributing factors. Yeah. Traffic, uh, distance to, of workers, a lot of, I live on the island, a lot of workers live like very far away, be like Aja, um, um, like Ogun State Road, Egbeda, Ikorodu, and all of those places. So it's sometimes tough. But I had to go the extra mile. I will house some of them and say, don't worry, stay here, as in provide accommodation for them so that they can, they can meet up. And that was how I got into Lagos. And then, you know, got my first um, shop. I got my first shop through the sheer favor of God. Mm-hmm. It was one of my big auntie in, in who... I knew in Ibadan, and she she sell, she has an interior shop, and then she just told me she was shutting. I said, why are you shutting down? And all of that. We spoke about it. I said, okay, we can work things out. You produce furniture for us and put a showroom, and then while we have this and that. And when we agreed on something, I said, we started running it together. So one thing I want to talk on that is relationship. Relationship will help you a lot. I keep talking about relationship. Me, relationship has done so much for me. Relationship is very key in this work of entrepreneurship because it can be it can be lonely, it can be tiring, it can be cumbersome, it can be so much of a weight that you can't carry on yourself. Mm-hmm. Your relationship will help you to carry. Look at I got a shop in a prime area just because of relationship. You understand? And then like that, I started until recently, last year we opened a um, new shop in, in Victoria Island. It's just my, um, it's my fifth year in Lagos. And God wow. has been so Wow, so, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Wow. Also, so one thing I want to talk about quickly is about um surviving in new terrain. Surviving in new terrain also starts from relationship and it also starts from um, um by the time by the time by the time people help you with their you leverage on people's relationship. If I if you are leveraging on my on the relationship I have with someone to get something. By the time you get it, it's up to you to deliver. I won't be there to help you to deliver. It is what you do afterward. So a lot of time, people, you leverage on other people's relationship, but you get there, you mess up, you don't deliver. You, you know, you don't, I expect that from that level, you you have gotten another relationship, which you should also leverage on. If you don't service that relationship properly, you won't be able to leverage on it. So the, the building relationship is like building an um. Um, I, maybe like an organogram it keeps going, it keeps spreading building a network it keeps spreading yeah. but a lot of people have sh- they've, 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 um, they've um, like um, how will I put this 
They've stunted their own growth because of character, because of um, managing those relationships. Relationship is like a car. If you don't service it, one day, engine will pack up. You cannot keep getting from the same relationship you don't service. So you don't say, ah, I'm, a, I'm, uh, I'm in business, so I don't... I don't need uh, I don't need anybody. I'm I'm a CEO of my own CEO. Yeah, you need people to grow. People play a huge part in entrepreneurship. They play a huge part in growth because it's the people that you know. I, I've got to even workers that up until now, my friends, when they see somebody, maybe they go somewhere and they see somebody who's working and is very good. Maybe a carpenter say, "Hey, I got a worker for you." I said, "Are you recruiting?" I said, "Ah, no, this guy is very good. You must keep him," and all of that, you know. <laughs> He helps a huge wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. I have a whole page of okay, you can't see it very well, but I've listed so much. If I could just read through for you know, just to remind people of all the things you've touched on. Step out. So you started by saying you you had a desire. I mean, you wanted to make money. And you said you love to have money. And I'm just going to clarify for anybody that's thinking ah this one is money driven because I'm happy that in the process of sharing your story you talked about how, times when you did not make any profit because you chose yeah. learning over earning and yeah. Warren Buffett will always say the more you learn the more you earn and your story clearly proves that that principle is true so um, even though you said by saying you love having money it's great to hear that you chose learning over earning a lot of times so people don't think oh this is just a money driven no let's um let's get the fact out of this great <laughs> great session in fact just listening to you I'm like I'm going to get a shop <laughs> start something that I've just been dragging get my feet on <laughs> but because you know that story about how before evening you had a shop and that has led to more growth. Sometimes we're the greatest, um, what's the word now? Like we're the ones that stop ourselves on so many yeah. things. And, I, I, and it's true that when you step out and do something, other doors open. If you don't yeah. step out, then you don't find out what's going to happen next. And then take chances, saying yes to things that you were not even sure about. But yeah. saying yes to them and then going to learn. And I love how you said, you don't try to do them yourself. You get the best. That's such a great yeah. mindset. Even though it may cost you more and end up being like, you don't get to make any money, but then you're learning from the best. And now yes. next time you know what the best do and you can even do better. So that's such a good one. I would take chances, do it on shore, do it afraid. You said you were shaking <laughs> a number of times, but you went ahead. And then mentors matter. I wish I could use yeah. a loudspeaker for this one. A lot of times people are like, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. Mentors matter as far as you can leverage people's experiences, their mistakes, yeah. their knowledge. You know, you were learning from literally everyone. Oh, this lady called me to do a job and her husband was mentoring me. Sure. Okay. And then you said, I wrote, be reliable. You know, people ask you to do things and you delivered. You didn't tell yeah. stories. Quality. You talked about the quality of your fabric, the quality of your workers, growing the business, you know, being open to taking on bigger things. You did 300. They said, do 800. You went for it. You did it. Loving to read. Curiosity. You know, being yeah. inquisitive. I heard that a lot. And then people, you know, you talked a lot about relationships. That your friend that said, get to shop with these friends that push you. So who are people in your circle? It matters. And then you got an accountant. For me, that's a structure because that's a big deal. A lot of people are in business. And I'm guilty of this one. You don't know your numbers. You don't know how are you making a profit? It's just like ah, money's coming in, Sha. You know, so having an accountant early on, that was such a good one. I've heard someone say, your first hire in a startup or a business should be an accountant. Mm. So that's, Very important. So, so that you know what you're doing. And then, then you were able to see your profit and that motivated you to even do more. Yeah. So that's so good. And how you grew the business, starting with something and then growing, adding, adding, adding. And today you're producing and doing projects. That's so good. Um, and then I wrote here, do you do this? You said people kept asking, do you do this? So listening to your customers, listening to what people are asking for, 
so that you know what you need to add on to the business. Um, you talked about your circle and how that matters. Then you talked about developing people. I wish I could yeah. just pause here for another hour because business, especially in Africa, I see that this is an area where we struggle with developing people. A lot of times they feel like, oh, if I develop this person, they're going to leave me. If I develop this person, mm -hmm. um, they'll outgrow me. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Exactly. So it's so important to invest in people. You know, if you go into the Bible, one of my favorite stories is a woman who was pouring into jars and the oil didn't stop until she ran out of jars. Whenever I think yeah. about investing in people, I'm like, can you run out of people? You exactly. can't. So the more you pour into people, the more your oil, your knowledge, whatever you want to call that oil yeah. in your life will keep flowing. So that's just an encouragement to anyone who is holding back from pouring into people. Just do it. You never know. You never know yeah. where those people will go. Like you said, it was somebody, a housekeeper in a hotel that you poured into sharing what you do, <laughs> you know, and they had that knowledge enough to be able to speak up for you. So that's just connecting two things, marketing as a way of pouring into people what you do <laughs> and also yeah, exactly. teaching totally others quiet. what you know um, as a way to develop them. So, And then excellence, I heard that a lot. It ties to what I mentioned earlier about quality. That's so, so powerful. You know, being excellent and not um, feeling like I've arrived. You're always challenging yourself. I love how you said, I, I didn't want to keep staying in the pattern of being a big fish in a small <laughs> pond. I wanted, so it's like starting all over. Yeah. That is so powerful. Like, I know I keep saying powerful, but <laughs> <laughs> it has been such an inspiring time here. You know, pushing yourself, pushing yourself, challenging yourself to grow and build capacity. Because one thing I love to say about building capacities, once you build it, you've built it, you now have, you know, room to do more you can't go back yeah yeah you know you just continue exactly. yeah it's like an expansion you your capacity it stays mm -hmm. so it can't go smaller it can only go bigger and of course that's with continuous learning and staying yeah. relevant in your space you said something about wanting to stay ahead of what people will even ask for before they ask me for this extraordinary thing i'm already there and yeah. then you mentioned the favor of god because some people are like, oh, it's my hard work. I have to work hard, work hard, work hard. There mm -hmm. is that place of the favor of God, which a lot of yeah. people call luck, you know, um, to get that first shop in Lagos. And you talked inside there, that story, there's partnership, there's reliability, you know, because you partnered with that woman and you've been able to stay reliable in that relationship. And that's yeah. how it's going. Um, and then the last thing I wrote is be rich in people. That yeah. is something that came out of my Bible study yesterday. I realized that God is rich in people. Where I was reading the passage where he said, the riches of his inheritance in the saints. Yeah, exactly. I just stayed on that. I'm like, what does this even mean? So his inheritance is people, the saints, and he's rich in that. So it just, yeah. I just wrote to be rich in people because I saw that that could be a principle that you could translate into so many things, yeah. whether it's business, whether it's whatever. So it's amazing to see that come out again from this conversation. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm so glad. Another thing I also want to quickly to mention is asking for help. You know, a lot of people have this relationship and they don't know how to ask. I tell people the worst thing, I'm not, I'm never afraid to ask. The worst you can tell me is no. And then I've, God has helped me. I've developed myself so much that rejection does not mean a thing to me. I don't even count rejection as anything. As in, like, rejection next, down to even <laughs> relationship, like a marital relationship. As in, I remember I was dating a guy, and then the next thing, the, uh, the guy just came out, uh, he wants to stay back in America, uh, he wants to do his papers. Uh, da, da, da. I said, it's okay, fine. No, well, I'll go be with you, bye. <laughs> and seriously, it wasn't as if I went back and started sulking. I just, you know, settled it like, okay, he has to move on. You know, life happens. I have moved on. Ask for help. You know, a lot of people will, will, they will restrain themselves from asking for help because ah, I don't want him to now say I'm asking. I don't want him to hey, I don't understand. I will ask anybody. Unless I, in fact, people I don't talk to, 
I was just, maybe I just see you, maybe in my compound, of, like my estate, for instance. And I don't talk, uh, it's because I've not needed you. On the, the day I need you, uh, please, oh, I need, ask for help. Sometimes what you need is just around you. And you're dying in silence, not asking, not talking, talking to anybody about it. Ask for help. Rejection means nothing. The person who rejected you might not even remember. Imagine all the rejections I've, I've, I've experienced. No, nobody remembers. Even me, I can't even remember. Ask. Thank you. <laughs> That's such a good one. I'm writing this down because you said it earlier. Everything you need is within your circle. And it's true. Yes. There's something called the six degrees of separation. That anybody you want to meet in this world is six people away from you. Yeah, you know, true. ask for help. Rejection means nothing. <laughs> you say rejection next. <laughs> <laughs> that's such an interesting one for me because it's something we hear a lot i'm a sales um development representative and you make cold calls and people are like no nope, don't call this number it's like oh you know you could decide to be down or you could just call the next number so yeah wow wow i'm definitely going to listen to this again and again thank you so much for coming on the start podcast yeah and one thing i want to mention is a, a lot of our target audience is university students so i'm so happy okay. that you started this business in university so someone doesn't think oh i have to be big and then that concept of going to people who already have something and saying can i market it for you a lot of yes. people are sitting down and saying i don't have something to do but there's so many small businesses that need people to help push what they're doing and look you where you've gotten to because of drop that shipping up until now i still do drop shipping that i have some I, I i keep some money like my drop shipping money i don't even touch it because i don't need it and i don't a lot of time i don't even remember i make those money because i just put up something maybe you have something to sell and i say okay can i put it on my send me pictures i put it up how much are you selling 10 naira okay can you buy for 11 naira and I buy, you send me money, I send your money. That one night, I keep it aside. A lot of time, I don't remember them. I don't remember that money. I just drop it in my account and that's all. I still do drop shipping till today. So it's not, it's something that everybody can do. You have a network of exactly. people. And you don't know what they're looking for. So you can make extra, everybody needs an extra money here. Especially now, you need that extra income somewhere. One day now, I'm, going to, I'm even going to go and check the account and check how much I have, you know? <laughs> yeah wow wow thank you thank you thank You're you welcome. god thank bless you, you and expand you. you and grow thank you have you. a wonderful rest of your day thank you you too thank All you right. so very much god bless you okay bye bye